Welcome to In The Zone with Chris Zander, where we talk lifestyle, entrepreneurship, self-care, and much more. So go grab a drink or a snack and come on back because it is now time to get in the zone. My guest today is an internet personality who has used this platform to help build esteem for men through fashion and lifestyle tips. So let's welcome YouTube personality, Jair Wu. How are you, Jair? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I can't complain. I can't complain. So, okay, first things first. <clears throat> I've heard Jair. I've heard Jair. I've heard Jair, Jair yeah. right? I've heard so many different ways to pronounce your name. I want you to correct it once and for all right here. What's the correct pronunciation? Let's, let's clear it up. It's it's actually, I'm, I noticed right away as you said my name, I'm like, wow, he said it the correct way. Um, so, oh, okay. Uh, I was a little caught apart. I'm like, oh, that's great. Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pronounced Jair. Um, it's actually Jair. Um, I'm Mexican, so Jair is the proper pronunciation. And then, I mean, Jair. However, in I think just throughout like my life and in high school and just I don't know how it started. People just said Jair. It was just kind of like easier. So like my family and really close friends from childhood, it's Jair, Jair, how you said it. And then yeah, I just kind of stopped correcting them. I'm like, actually, Jair is easy. You know, be, <laughs> people would ask me like, especially teachers, first day of school, substitute teachers, they'd be like, how do you pronounce it? Like Jair, Jair. I'm like, sure, it's fine. So it's, it's weird. I, I respond to both. And then when I started my channel, I kind of just went with Jair. So it is interesting how I, the, to answer your question, it's Jair, but I, I respond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Because again, like I just mentioned, like I've heard so many different ways to pronounce it. I just want to make sure that we get it right here on In the Zone with Chris Zander. That's good. That's, <laughs> I personally prefer it. So I prefer Jair. So I, I thank you. Well, perfect. Perfect. Well, take us back to growing up in Palm Springs. What was childhood like for you during that time? Oh, childhood back back in my day, <laughs> in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, it was a good. I don't know. I had a really good upbringing. Palm Springs is home, and honestly, I mean, I have no complaints. It's interesting because I was talking to a friend about this the other day, just about childhood, and I'm like, I had a really good time here. I mean, we we grew up. Uh, it was, I'm a oldest of two, and parents are still together. I grew up in a really loving a huge family like i said mexican american so we have i have a lot of cousins yeah. aunts uncles and over half of them live here in palm springs as well so we grew up and close in proximity as well to each other so we'd always go over to their house and you know back in the, i make it sound like i'm super old but like back in <laughs> free technology like you know playing in, on the street and just like creating forts and just like using our imagination and um yeah i mean of course there are Definitely challenging times, even like during adolescence, as we all, I'm sure we go through. But for the most part, I had a, a really good childhood, which I'm grateful for. Yeah. So it sounds like you were around a lot of love and for the most part, like positivity and just being able to express like just culture, just all of those great things. So that's I love that. I love that. So on your channel um, and we'll talk more about your channel as well, but you have been very transparent about struggling with weight issues during childhood. I'm just curious to know where that stemmed from. Um, and what was that journey like for you at that time? Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's interesting because my, I grew up, well, I had a phase where I, as I'm sure we all do, maybe like I started coping with the way I coped with like stress and just insecurities was through food. And honestly, I love food. Like I'm a foodie. And my mom never restricted us from that. So I, I definitely started putting on pounds, which is putting on pounds, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, I started just getting into like my fitness journey as I was just kind of like, it's interesting because as I was getting comfortable with myself internally, I started changing those habits and started working out, like eating healthy. And it kind of stemmed sort of like a passion for me when it comes to to fitness and nutrition and health which i do talk about that on on my channel and i've been pretty transparent yeah. with that and um yeah i could i could go on and on about about that journey but uh yeah i hope that answered that answered the question i kind of i kind of do yeah. sometimes <laughs> ramble on so i'm, I'm <laughs> Hey, it's all good. It's all good. We're just having a conversation. So no worries here. Yes. So 
Okay, so you're known for providing fashion tips for men, helping men build themselves up through fashion and style, as well as giving motivation from an emotional and mental perspective. What motivated you to start a YouTube channel and specifically focus on men's fashion and self-care? Yeah, so good question. So stemming back, going back to what I was talking about with growing up, you know, using our imagination and creativity and, you know, creating, I, I was that, that kid on the block that would like create talent shows and I would like go around the neighborhood and, and I, I would want like a VH, I, instead of getting toy cars for Christmas, I would ask for a video camera. And I'll tie this in together in a bit, but I used to go and like record my neighbors and like interview them. And I'd like, it's so funny because I used to pretend I had my own talk show. And then fast, forward, <laughs> yeah. fast forward a couple of years later. I mean, I, I just started really liking like style and fashion. So it all just happened kind of I just, I was always gravitated towards that. Like I would look forward to shopping for a first day of school and just like, oh, what am I going to wear? And it's cool because I never really, it was always about how I felt with what I wore. It wasn't never really like, oh, what are people going to think? I just experimented a lot. I also went through some really interesting style choices and like phases. So I was never afraid, which is cool. <laughs> looking back, I was never afraid to experiment with, I mean, I had like blonde pieces of hair, like in high school and just like different kind of phases. And I was just doing me, but people would actually tell me like, I really like your style. Like, it's really cool. And I was like, oh, you know, thank you. And um, it, this all ties in together because when I found YouTube, I would notice specifically like women doing beauty videos, like makeup. And my, my cousins would watch these creators and I'm like, oh, wow, that's so crazy that you can help other people, right? It's like even someone doing, like I said, makeup or hair. So it all kind of clicked one day and I'm like, wait, I think I can kind of merge all of my interests. Like videography, I love editing. I love photography. I love the creative aspect of, of all of this. I like style. I like fashion. I feel like I have a story. I have a point of view. And it wasn't even, I didn't even think that I can create a living off of this. I was just like, oh, this is a great way, an outlet to, to do this. And it's interesting. I never even really thought that people would watch. I was like, oh, it would be, wow. it'd be awesome. Like, that'd be cool. But I was just kind of like, yeah, let me create some fashion videos, some content. And it all kind of started from there. I mean, I posted a video. It's super cringe. So I don't advise you guys to look back. <laughs> but I just started like, let me talk about hair as if I knew what I was doing. And then it just kind of snowballed. And before I knew it, it was, I was gaining hundreds of subscribers. At one point it was like a hundred a day. And I was like, what is happening? And it just kind of fueled more of my creativity. And then it just became it is snowballed from there. And right? I was like, this is awesome. Just, yeah, get my creative juices flowing. And then also the most important thing for me was connecting with people across the world. And just, I don't know, it was, it was humbling and it's cool. Absolutely. And I love the fact that, number one, you said it's humbling and it's a way to connect with people. I love that because it illustrates that you have a humanistic aspect about you, that you care for others. And to me, I think that's really great. Like, that's a really great um, just skill to have and not even a skill. It's like an internal thing. I think that's great. Number two, I think it's great because I remember 10 years ago when you started your YouTube channel. 10 years ago, I was 15. So I remember like watching those videos and like just trying to get a little bit more familiar with like style myself because I had lost a bunch of weight going into high school my freshman year. So I was like, I need to do better with my style. And you honestly were an inspiration. So I had to give you that. Um, I, I really do. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Back, back Absolutely. In the, red, Absolutely. the Red Room days. I don't know if you remember that. This is like I, the first videos, I think, like this was in 2012. I was living in my parents' yeah. house and I had the red, like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. And congratulations on on even, like you said, it was back in high school, like the weight loss, like, as you know, I, I relate to all that. So. Yes. Yes. Well, now I don't know what my excuse is because I seem to have found some of it back, but <laughs> it's like, that was a great encourage an encourager at that time. So like, I do appreciate you for that. Um, so when we talk about hygiene, oftentimes men associate hygiene only as a thing that women care about. Why do you think that, I guess, hygiene is 
important for men and if men don't understand that it should be important for them, why should they think it's important? I think it's very important. I mean, I'm very, I'm all about self-care and taking care of yourself and, and personal hygiene. And um, I don't know, I think we're at, we're at a time now where it's, I feel like back then, at least in my opinion, I feel like back then men weren't talking about this as much or even like, and this is a whole different conversation in regards to like, you know, like machismo and all this stuff where guys were uncomfortable saying like, oh yeah, I take care of myself or like, I want to look good or I I, I want to take care of my appearance. And it's, I think now we're at a time where it's, it's just to answer your question. I think that it produces self-confidence in my opinion. It's like, if I take care of myself, I, I smell good. I look good. I, I practice self-care. It's like it all bleeds into other areas of your life. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm curious to know what areas does it bleed in for you? Like, what does self-care look like for you? Well, self-care, that's a good question. Um, self-care starts from the self. I practice a lot of mindfulness and meditation. It's part of my self-care routine. And I think it's important to find what is important for you because it looks different for everybody um whether it be again meditation or journaling or exercise that's another one of, of mine as well and i do it more so because it makes me feel good you know i, I feel <laughs> some people are like how do you feel awake after work i'm like not all the time after leg day i'm sometimes exhausted but <laughs> but i get those endorphins <laughs> and i feel good about myself and i think it's just taking that, I, I would want to say it's important to take that time, especially like beginning of the day when you have like no distractions, just really center yourself and just kind of start the day with, with an intention. It's like, how do I want to walk into today? You know, we have that choice, right? We have that, that choice to, to show up in life, however we want to. And, um, so that for me is, is self-care is, is yes, it's, you know, it's, doing my hair and like dressing nicely, however I want to that day. But I think most importantly, if you take out all the layers, it's how we feel inside and how we take care of this. Absolutely. And you are very transparent on your page about self-care um, and just emotional care as well. I really commend you for that as well. I'm curious to know, like, why is emotional care just as important for you as self-care, if that makes sense. Because self-care, oftentimes we think of like valuing ourselves, what we wear, you know, our skin care, our hair, but in emotional care, that's totally different. Um, why do you think that's just as beneficial, if not more beneficial? Oh yeah, I think it's way more beneficial. I mean, as you said, and I hope I'm, I'm answering this, I'll answer this to my, the best of my ability. I, I think, yes, it's, it's, it's great to, look good externally and aesthetically but if we don't have that emotional well-being i mean i think like it's like what's the use of the other right i think um being connected not only to ourselves but to other people is really important that's why i i appreciate that you mentioned that about my channel because i've always been intentional with what i put out there and sure i'll, I'll put some like fun videos out there that are not all like deep, you know, it's not all about emotional well-being, but I guess part of like my mission in life and when I create content and I don't just want to show that like, Hey, just because you, you put yourself together just means that like, that's the only thing in life. I'm like, it, it, there's just more to that. And yeah, I'm just intentional with what I want to, what I want to spread out there. And I feel like once you kind of, you know, practice that self-care and that self-love. And it's, it's a journey. I mean, you don't just wake up and you're like, oh my God, I, I love myself or I feel great because <laughs> yes. there are days where I'm, I'm not great as well. There are days where I have self-doubt, where I have imposter syndrome, where I, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I don't always have everything together, but I think that's part of being human and, and having that like compassion and saying, hey, it's okay to not be okay, but tomorrow's a new day. And let's, you know, again, going back to that intention. So once you have, that a better understanding of like who you are and how you feel the rest just kind of flows right you kind of start you feel better so you want to take better care of yourself you want to show up in the world that way yeah yeah no it's that's the truth how do you get there though because you know some people are not there yeah. 
or some people are on the journey to there, where does it start? You mean starting like to finding yourself or, or? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what would you say is the starting point for that? The starting point, I, I would, I would say again, it's different for everyone. What's helped me is just figuring out what I like, what I'm not, you know, like figuring out what I don't want in life. Like, I think it's just kind of part of, of the experience. You just have to, to experience life. But I think it just starts with that choice, that choice to be like, I'm the only person like in my body. This is my life. Like I am the creator of my life. And I do truly think that we have the power to like change our thoughts and change how, how we feel, you know, choosing positivity and, and I know it can be hard, like here I am talking about it and I'm saying like, oh yeah, you know, just choose positivity. And I'm not trying to make it sound like it's super easy, but it's kind of like, like a muscle. You just have to kind of keep, keep practicing at that. And I know I'm kind of repeating myself from before, but just having, having compassion towards yourself as well. Um, and again, figuring out and quieting those voices in your head and like not allowing those voices to, to take over because, you know, a lot of the times we have these like limiting beliefs it's like we can't do this or you know you'll never i don't know succeed and it's like all of that is just mm. all these like conditioned thoughts that we have from whether it be childhood or even some something someone told us and we somehow chose to believe it so it's just like fighting against those those thoughts and just kind of quieting that so you going back to there because we're talking about it i only feel like i i have to bring it up you have been like very transparent about even being, I guess, struggling with feeling like, am I adequate enough? Or, you know, sometimes feeling like, is my content worthy enough? And just different things like that. How do you manage that, if that makes sense? Because, you know, sometimes when we are in our own head, yeah. you know, we could be our own worst critic. And how do you manage that in those moments? Like what, what skills and what things do you do to kind of, negate from that mindset yeah i think first off it's it's really easy to compare ourselves even in the world we live in right now with social media and i have to figure like i for me it's it's i, I take breaks for example even for social media which is so interesting because a lot of my career is like online so i have to be mindful of like how much time i spent because i can fall into that trap of comparison and then that leads to self-doubt sometimes so it's just kind of like reminding myself and, and getting back to like my my values and getting back to why i started why i started all of this you know like what is the bigger message and like that's why i think it's important whenever you do anything in life any goal have that why you know like mm. what is the reason for doing this because we can get lost it gets murky when we're like have all of these it's just so much stimulation now and we see all these people and I have to remind others that, for example, speaking of me, that some, sometimes I'll, I'll fall into that trap of comparison, but I have to remember that, hey, a lot of what you see is just all highlights of people's life. Like it, it we live in an, an age where everything seems like people have it so easy, right? And like they attain things super quickly because yeah. we just see the best parts of social media. And I know this because people also tell me the same thing. They're like, wow, you have everything like together and you're doing all of this. And it's like, I mean, yeah, you're, you're correct in a fact, but it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, it takes, Absolutely. Work. it takes, it takes dedication. And I've been at this for a while. And um, so again, it's just kind of when that, when that happens for me, I have to journal. Journaling is a, a great method for me to just like, write down everything I'm feeling, releasing that. And then I change it to gratitude. Like, what am I grateful for? Um, and it can be anything like grateful for this, where I live, grateful for food, for water, <laughs> everything. So yeah, for me, it's just, uh, yeah, like quieting my thoughts. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm assuming that's where the exercise part comes in. You are like a fitness guru. Like you stay fit, you stay trim, like you mentioned earlier. You're very passionate about fitness. I'm curious to know first, what is your regimen? <laughs> a regimen, it changes, but I mean, I work out like five times a week, four to five times a week. But it's interesting you say fitness guru because for me, I'm like, 
thank you. I'm like flattered. I don't feel that way, but <laughs> it's really cool to, <laughs> to hear that I'm like, nah. um, but I, yeah, I work out about four to five times a week. I try to eat pretty clean, like as much as I can. I, I believe it's all about balance. You know, I definitely enjoy some treats, if you will. God, that makes it sound like I'm a dog, but like I enjoy like, <laughs> treats, you know, I'll enjoy pizza and Diet Coke and uh, chocolate and all of that. But um, yeah, four to five times a week, eat pretty clean, lots of water. It's my regimen. <laughs> okay. I like so that. Clean. So with combining, oh, I'm sorry, I said weightlifting. I, I lift weights. I did CrossFit for a while and then I just kind of went back to just regular, you know, strength training. So. Yeah. Yeah. So with combining the mental health aspect, self-care, exercise what makes jair feel most confident and sexy in his skin oh that's a good question um what makes me feel confident well again I, I, it's interesting I, I feel like super confident when after a workout for example just because i don't know what it is like and i think that's why it's important to do little like goals right throughout throughout life and goals can be as small as like i don't even know like anything like getting up out of bed is, is a little feat, right? Sometimes like, <laughs> so it's just, once you start doing little goals like that, for me, at least I feel confident in myself. And so like after a, a nice lifting session, I'm like, Oh my God, I feel super confident. Cause I feel strong. You get that like pump. Um, I also feel confident when I'm around people that I love, just, I feel like more my, I feel myself of course, and like safe and happy. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's like all that comes to mind at the moment. Uh, creating is also makes me feel confident. Editing, photography. Um, yeah. Another thing that you seem to be confident with is you've taken a few self trips to different places where you'll just literally take yourself somewhere. Like what has that experience, I guess, taught you about yourself by just traveling the world independently doing those trips and stuff and getting out of my comfort zone though it's scary at first it does create confidence i don't know what it is after just like solo trips i feel like i unlock a little different like version of myself and it, it's it's really interesting that i talk about this because i used to be someone that never wanted to do things by myself i was codependent sometimes i was in relationships where i was like I kind of got used to, I mean, I feel like I was always inherently like independent, but I think growing up, I kind of became a little codependent. So I was, I would be like, no, I, I don't want to go to a restaurant by myself. Like I don't want to go to the movies by myself. I was that person, but something happened as I've gotten older. I'm like, I just want to, well, I know what happened. Breakups happened, <laughs> but I, was like, I, like, I need, I just want to experience life and I don't want to look back and have regrets. And I always thought it was so cool how people can just do solo trips and, and experience yeah. on their own. And there was definitely like a, a journey that I had within like the last two, three years of, of just really like being on my own and enjoying that process. And yeah, I've, I went to Maui like a few weeks ago and did a little solo trip and that was amazing. And I was a little worried at first because I think every time I've done this, I'm like, am I, I'm like, did I get, did I book too many days on my own? Like, I don't, want to feel, <laughs> I don't want to feel too lonely. And what I found is that it actually created the opposite. I felt like mm. super alive and, and connected. And it just allowed me to connect with myself and just do things that I normally wouldn't do. I mean, I was just like snorkeling on my own, like, surfing lessons i would talk to some people i'd go to the bar by myself i'd go have dinner solo and and um yeah it was just a beautiful experience so i i recommend it if it's if you can or wherever it may be i just think it, it's important to to do things on your own sometimes you know to, to feel yeah. comfortable in solitude yeah. So what have you learned about yourself through doing these numerous things on your own? What have you learned most about yourself and what are you growing to learn about yourself? I've learned, I've learned that I'm more adventurous than I thought I was, that I'm more like, yeah, like more gutsy, if that's even a word that I, I can really pretty much like do anything 
I set my mind to and that I don't really need like, sure. Uh, life is all about um, connection and community, but there's something to be said about, again, like feeling full on your own and not needing someone else to like stimulate you. If that makes sense. Like being mm, yeah. to yourself and just really enjoy your own company truly like, that's what I, what I've learned. And I think that even strengthened my actual relationships in life, you know, just like, even with dating, I mean, just feeling like, Oh, okay. Like I really don't need, I don't need anyone else. Like I sure it's great and it's beautiful, but I, I'm like good on my own. And also I think that's important too, because when you do find the person that you're supposed to be with, they allow, it's like your whole on your own, Right. And you're hoping that person's whole on their own as well. And when you combine each other together, right, you guys are able to bring both your individual wholeness together and create something that's even more magical, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, I always like to think of it as like two pillars, right? You want to be two pillars holding up your relationship. You don't want, that's why sometimes I have, um, it's interesting when people say like, oh, I want to find my other half. It's like, I mean, I would like to think you're whole for, <laughs> you know, you want to be whole on your own and then find someone else that's whole as well. Then you, you combine all of that beautifulness together. And then it's, you know, you start from there. Um, so absolutely. I mean, that's what, that's what it's taught me is that I'm, I'm pretty independent and I do admire that about myself. Don't get me wrong. I, I love being in love and I love friendship and family, but yeah, I think it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm feel good again, like doing things solo and it's not as scary as I used to think it was. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I want to make a transition. You have been very transparent about just your dating life on YouTube. Most people may not know that um, you're gay. Right. I'm curious to know, would you Happy say right actually <laughs> so i'm curious to know like why was that so important for you to acknowledge that on youtube and also just share your personal journey on youtube yeah it's a good question it's it was important to me again going back to connecting with others and once i it kind of hit me that wow there's actual human beings watching my content it's not just me talking to a camera um, I don't know. I felt some, I don't even really know how to answer this. I just felt like, a like just all happened naturally. Maybe I felt some sense of like responsibility to be like, Hey, this is me. And this can help you because I know exactly what it feels like to be like closeted and to, to just, I know what it's like basically as a gay man. And I wanted to put my story out there in hopes of helping others. And like that kind of, overpass like all of the other content that I was creating. And it was really scary when I was going to post, I still remember to this day, like feeling nervous and almost shaky to hit the post button on YouTube because I'm like, this can kind of change a lot. Um, and I don't regret it whatsoever because as much as others say, like you've helped me, it's again, it's kind of like a community, like others have helped me as well. Uh, just with that, that back and forth and, Again, sure, I'll, I'll get com comments like, oh, you know, you've helped me find my style. You've helped me like, I found this because of you and I feel great because of you or you introduced me to this product. But I'm like, the ones that really touch me and, and stick with me are the, the messages or emails of other guys saying, you've helped me feel confident and helped me, you know, accept myself or like come out to my family or I relate to you because I also grew up in a, you know, Hispanic household and so yeah, that is like, it just makes everything worthwhile and it's, it's helped me as well. So I'm like really, yeah. really happy that I chose to, to put that out there. And again, I, I try to be tr transparent. So I'm like, I, I mean, this is real. <laughs> this is. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, here's the thing when you're real, people are going to do one or two things. They're going to accept you. Mm -hmm for your realness, most of the time they will because they will respect you or people will feel inferior to your real, 
your realness, if that makes sense. Because you're so real, you're so raw, you're so honest about who you are that it it kind of stifles or brings something in within someone that doesn't know who they are, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It's very empowering, if that makes sense. And not only are you helping yourself, but others around you, you know? Have you found that? Yeah. I, in my mind, I, I just, again, I was scared because even when I posted that video, for example, sharing my story, I hadn't even come out to even like half my family. So like they also kind of saw that for the first time. So it was just kind of like, let me just come out once and for all to like <laughs> the world where her wants to watch this. But yeah, it, it definitely, it, it also helped me feel more empowered, as you said, just to know that like, I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm awesome as all of you guys are as well. Like, and yeah, there's like haters, but at the same time, I'd rather be, what is that saying that they say? It's like, I'd rather be, I don't want to be, rather be liked for who I am or something than hated. Something there's, there's a thing, I, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I gravitate towards people that are genuine and like, that's all I, you know, I love authenticity. So it's like that would be hypocritical of me not to be. Um, and again, everyone has their own like coming out journey. Speaking on this topic, I mean, since it's Pride Month and we're talking about this as well, like everyone has their own journey. But for me at that time, that just felt felt correct to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's make a transition. Okay. So now I want to talk about um, your clothing line. You do a lot of things on YouTube, you know, talking about your personal life and talking about exercise, self-care, motivation. Can you talk about your clothing line? What motivated you to create this line? And what is your line? Yeah, thank you for asking. It's So my line is Good Soul Supply. That's the brand, goodsoulsupply.com. And I, well, we sell um, jewelry, minimal jewelry, uh, T-shirts, expanding into more, things I'm working on right now, which will be coming out soon. But yeah, I'm on my channel. I mean, I was always showing other, other brands, of course. And people would always ask me like, what are you wearing? Or like, what, of course. And they're like, what? And I was really big into jewelry and bracelets and rings. And I just feel like accessories make an outfit, make or break an outfit. And <laughs> yeah, just one day I'm like, well, I should create my own, my own line and, and just kind of, curate a collection of things that I would wear. And that's just kind of how it all started. This, this started about like a year and a half ago, like two years ago. Actually, I was going to, I was starting to work on it during the pandemic. And then that kind of yeah. wrench on things. So then it was, you know, after that, we started getting back to it and yeah, it's doing well. I mean, right now we're working on the second collection, which is nice because as a new small business owner, there's a lot of things you learn, you know, it's like, okay, what do people like? What do they do? don't they like so i'm really excited about the the second um collection so it's mainly, mainly minimal jewelry so you said minimal jewelry and then you have sure. um t-shirts as well right t-shirts just and i don't even want to say it's like merch it's just merch it's just an, an entire different entity which is the brand good soul supply and um yeah we have a lot of cool stuff as well we even have a candle right now so i want to expand into like home and different things like that. Just the whole experience of getting ready, you know, like putting on the bracelet even and like lighting a candle, the whole experience of that. So as an influencer, um, who is your biggest influencer? Well, honestly, this might sound a little cheesy, but it's true. Um, my my dad, my parents are like inspiration to me. And I don't know, I their work ethic really, I've learned from them and and they inspire me all the time. And you know, they immigrated here from, from Mexico and just like leaving everything behind took a lot of, of guts and like, it's, it's a risk. And I just feel like, again, I'm like in awe of them and inspired every day. And they teach me to, they've taught my brother and I, since we were kids to go after our dreams. Like, that's why I think it's so important how you talk to others, even if, I mean, I'm not a parent, but mm. they, it's, it just sticks to me still to this day as an adult. It's like, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Just work hard, believe in yourself, and the rest flows. That's what they would always tell us as, a, as, as, as kids. And um, that is, truthfully, the answer that comes to mind when you ask me that. I love that. I love that. Okay, so beyond the camera, what would people be most shocked 
and surprised to know about you? That's a good question. Um, that I, it's interesting that I'm probably way more goofy and weird than I even come across <laughs> on my channel. Like if you really get to know me behind the camera, I'm, which is good. Stay weird. Like I'm all about, about that. Again, there's like a juxtaposition because I can be out there, but I can also be, I'm super chill and I can be introverted as well. Um, I enjoy my, my, my downtime, even though I, I, I can be, I'm good with talking to others and I love socializing, but I'm also kind of like recluse a little bit, like to be at home, <laughs> like a little nerdy sometimes. So I think that though, those things would be surprising. So a little bit of extrovert and introvert, introvert as well, right? Yeah. I don't know if, if you've heard of the um, like Myers Briggs personality test. It basically no, I have not. Basically, it's like a, a questionnaire, and it just it just basically tells you you fill out this whole question. It's like forty questions, I believe, and then it's like you find out kind of like type of person you are, whether you're like introverted, and it just kind of helps you and see like who you are and like maybe what career works best. I don't know. It's just really cool, and it. Um, it actually came out that I was like 51% extroverted and then like 49% introverted, which makes sense because I'm either or <laughs> I'm like either <laughs> or, I can, which is good, good because I do know that about myself. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling a little more introverted. I'll like recharge and then I'll get back out there. And then I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> like half and half. Yeah. It's half and half. I, I know for me personally, I'm more extroverted, but Sometimes I'm introverted. I would say I have never taken the test, but I would say like I'm more extroverted because I love people. Like yeah. just getting to learn from people and grow from people. So I like I don't know. I have to I have to try that test out. I have to see. Which makes sense that you enjoy people because of what you do, which is really yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so another transition. So over the past ten years of being a content creator. How has, I guess, your involvement as a creator and being an internet personality, how has it helped you evolve personally and professionally? That is a really good question. I mean, I'm still learning. And first off, it's crazy to think that I've been doing this for 10 years. That is wild. I'm like, <sighs> there's, I mean, I think even just aside from, from the online content, I mean, I've just experienced so much in life. So that's also, I've changed, of course, as we all do. Um, but I think yeah. throughout, throughout the years on social media, I've just learned that, again, goes back to kind of what I was saying that like, I can really, I don't know, create cool shit. Like I can make things happen. And, and I never thought that about myself growing up. But again, it's interesting because once I, I started putting myself out there and uh, getting these opportunities, for example, and um, especially like during the uh, uh, like middle part of my career online, you know, going to panels and and doing like conferences and just getting interviewed, I, I used to get so nervous and I still sometimes do, but I was like, well, I got to do it scared anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, let fear stop you basically. Um, so I've just learned a lot of a lot of things about myself. And it's interesting because I talk about this on my channel. And sometimes when I talk about this, it's also me talking to myself. Like I'm not only I'm not speaking at people, I'm like talking to people, but also it's like I'm reminding myself of what I'm saying. If that makes sense. Um, and I also feel like it's a great way to hold myself accountable because I gotta walk the walk if I'm talking the talk. So yeah, it's just like checking in with myself all the time. Like, all right, what I'm saying, I have to do this as well. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Ooh, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, I see myself hopefully, I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't even know if I have an answer to that. Um hopefully still creating content, um, having other businesses. I have some things in the works that I 
I'm not ready to, to talk about yet, but it's some exciting things that I'm, that I'm working on. That's very much different from like social media or like fashion and lifestyle. It's a completely different thing, which I'm excited for. So just continue, um, continue on with my, my business endeavors and hopefully live elsewhere, you know, perhaps in Europe. <laughs> I don't know. Got you. Okay. Down something settled down. <laughs> uh, yeah. In conclusion, what advice would you give your younger self? I would just tell myself to not worry so much about what other people think of you. That everyone else, like all those people that you think are maybe judging you, like chances are they're not even thinking about you and this is not going to matter in the future. So stay true to yourself, I would say, despite what anyone else might think at the end of the day, the only person you really have at the end of the day is you. And to not curse, F, bleep, <laughs> what anyone else has to say. I would do that. Yes. I love that. I do. I do. So in closing, where can people find you? Where can they follow your content? Where can they find you and your clothing line? Where can they find you? So you can find me at, I was like, www. Uh, <laughs> not on the site any, anymore, but working on that. But my my brand is goodsoulsupply.com. You can find me on Instagram. I actually believe all my handles. Yeah, all my handles are at Jairwoo, J-A-I-R-W-O-O. So you can find me Perfect. Instagram, um, YouTube, of course. Um, I'm starting to get into TikTok a little late to it. I'm, I'm, obsessed <laughs> with, I'm obsessed with TikTok, but I'm getting on that that train of posting on there. So you can find me on TikTok as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you, your boy is still lame. I still don't have a TikTok and probably won't ever create one because I just, I suck when it comes to social media. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would say don't go on it because it can get addicting. So maybe that's, maybe that's best to, to not. Have to <laughs> well, I received that. Well, Jair, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your transparency and I want to encourage you to, to keep um, pressing on, keep creating content that's meaningful, not only to yourself, but to those around you, because I promise you we're watching. And sometimes it may feel like just whatever, you know, we can get in our own heads sometimes, but keep doing you because you're doing a great job at it. I appreciate you so much. And I want to commend you as well for this podcast. I think it's amazing what you're doing. And I am just content and appreciative of, of our time here. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for those of you listening and watching today, until next time.